<clears throat> Good evening, folks. This is Larry Miles here in Louisville, Kentucky. I want to do a devotion Bible study tonight. It's called Give Me This Mountain, based on Joshua chapter 14, verse 6 to 14. I'll be presenting this lesson tomorrow morning at the Kramer and Hanover Church of Christ in Lexington, Kentucky. I'll read the passage first, and I ask you that you, be, you follow along and pray for me as I share this message about a man named Caleb. We talked last Sunday when I was in Lexington on the character Joshua on some life lessons from the book of Joshua. In Joshua chapter 14, verses 6 through 14, the reading is, Then the children of Judah came to Joshua and Gilgal. And Caleb, the son of Jeponiah, the Kenzanite, said to him, You know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me at Kadesh Barnea. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt, and I wholly followed the Lord God, my God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot is trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever because you have wholly followed the Lord my God and now behold the Lord has kept me alive as he has said these 45 years even ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel watered in the wilderness and now here I am this day 85 years old and yet I am as strong this day as on the day which Moses sent me just as my strength was then, so then is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim were there and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jeponiah, as inheritance. Hebron, therefore, became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jeponiah, the Kenzanite, to this day because he fully or wholly followed God's word, the Lord God of Israel. May God bless his holy word. The title of this message today is a statement or a demand that a man named Caleb made to Joshua. It was made during the conquest of the promised land, the land of Canaan. Most modern translations translate Caleb's statement in this manner, give me the hill country. Before we get into our exposition and application of the passage in Joshua, we must get the background of the passage and the events in our text. We go back 45 years to see what's going on. We have the narrative of the Exodus in Numbers chapter 10. And following, re and following recount the departure from Mount Sinai and the events that transpired. The people were at the border of the promised land. Moses follows the command of God to send 12 spies one from each tribe to go and check out the land and report back to him. The tribe of Ephraim chose Joshua, the son of Nun, and the tribe of Judah chose Caleb, the son of Jeponiah. No doubt they were picked because they were the strongest, bravest, most faithful, and most reliable in that tribe. Moses gives them instructions and they spied out the land for 40 days and then return to Kadesh Bardia to give their report. We find that in Numbers chapter 13, verse 17 to 33. 
We hope you'll go there and look at that later. The report started out very well, but 10 of the spies said, we can't conquer that land, even though God had promised it to them. Caleb and Joshua told the men, most of the people there at Kadesh Barnea, that with God's help, they could conquer the land, but the people believed the report of the 10 spies. Because of that, every man 20 years or over died during the 38 year wilderness wanderings and did not get to enter the promised land. As we said, the bright lights in this story were Joshua and Caleb. In Joshua 14 and verse 24, we read these words, but my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him, had, has followed me fully, I will bring into the land where he went and his descendants shall inherit it. Now we fast forward 45 years. A new generation of people under the command and leadership of Joshua have engaged the enemy in battle and won many decisive victories. It's now time to divide the land and give each tribe their inheritance. Now we see an 85 year old man stepping up to claim his inheritance. Here's a picture of a man, a child of God, who was not satisfied with the ordinary, but wants all that God has promised to him and can give him. What contributed to this success of this man named Caleb? How did he show his faith and put it into action? What are some of the characteristics and traits that Caleb possessed that we ought to emulate in our walk for the Lord Jesus Christ. In our exposition of the passage, we see that Joshua, I'm sorry, Caleb was very committed. We see that in verse eight as the phrase, but I wholly follow the Lord my God. Verse nine, you have wholly followed the Lord my God. Verse 14, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. He wholly followed the Lord. Instead of Caleb at least five times in the Old Testament, his faith did not help him move any mountains, but it did help him to capture one. The second point here in the exposition is that Caleb was very confident of his own faith. Verses 10 and 11, we'll read again. And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive as he has said these 45 years. Ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now here I am this day, 85 years old. And yet I am as strong this day as he was not that day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and coming in. Caleb knew that his strength and vitality were a gift from God. He gave God the credit. He also knew that he would have to use all of his God-given talent and strength to go out and fight for his inheritance. Someone has said that Caleb's faith wore work clothes. Three, Caleb was patiently persistent. God had made a promise to Caleb 45 years ago. He believed it and expected God to keep his word. Some application for our lesson today. What's it mean to follow the Lord fully or wholly as Caleb did? How might we follow Christ today fully? One, we must, what, what's it mean to follow the Lord fully? We must follow the Lord Jesus all the days of our life, not just when it's convenient. James DeForest Murch wrote a song back in the 30s. It is at number 243 in our hymnal. It's called The World All About Me, or otherwise known as I'll Put Jesus First in My Life. The chorus reads, in all that I say, in all that I do, throughout the world of toil and strife, by day and by night, 
through trust in his might, I'll put Jesus first in my life. We must follow Jesus with all of our hearts. We must believe God's promises completely. We must do more than window shop with God's promises. Illustration. A fellow said to his wife, why do you call it shopping? You never buy anything. She replied, well, why do you call it fishing? You never catch anything. As believers, we need to be like Caleb and claim God's promises to the fullest. He said that he wanted us to have an abundant life, our Lord Jesus said in the Gospels. Every inch, every ounce, every nerve, every fiber of Caleb belonged to God. Can we say the same? We must follow the Lord with undivided attention. We must seek him and his kingdom first. We must not love the world. In the book of 1 John, verses chapter 2, verse 11, I'm sorry, verses 15 through 17, it reads, Do not love the world nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the love, the lust of flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Do you want to abide forever? You must live for the Lord in the here and now. And prepare by living for him daily for this life that is to be eternal with him. We must show that we have changed kingdoms. In the book of Colossians, verses chapter 1, verse 12 to 14 says, Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and has conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. We've been rescued out of the kingdom of darkness. Before we were in Christ, we were under the devil's influence, whether we knew it or not. But the Lord Jesus came to the sin-cursed world to bear the leprosy of sin on his shoulders to redeem us. He is our redeemer. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. So we must know that we have changed kingdoms. And once we have changed kingdoms and are now in the kingdom of the son of his love, the marvelous light of the gospel, we must live for him in the here and now and must live trying to help others find their way out of darkness into the kingdom of Jesus and also to help strengthen those who are in Christ. The third point under this thought, what it means to serve the Lord fully is found in, it's talking about we must follow the Lord despite hazards or dangers. In the book of Numbers, Caleb faced giants in the land. Numbers 13 and verse 13. He faced the wrath of his own brethren. Numbers 14 and verse 10. He took a mountain from the giants in his old age. Joshua 14, verse 10 to 12. What of us today? We must not follow only when convenient. Paul told Timothy to preach the word of God in season, out of season. Preach the same thing wherever you go. Teach the same thing wherever you go. We must not follow only when it's popular. As Paul told Timothy, Preach the word in season, out of season. We must follow him 
completely. Give our all to the Lord. We must be fully equipped for service to our Lord. The Apostle Paul, writing to the young man Timothy, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15 to 17, spoke these words. And from that time, from, that, from childhood, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. He's given us all we need that pertains to life and godliness. We can take it to the bank that he'll be with us all the time. He will keep his word. We have the promise that the word of God is given that we may be complete. We must keep our eyes on Jesus at all times. In Hebrews chapter 12, verses, starting in verse 1, we read these words. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great, great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us or ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the shame endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For, for consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged to your soul. You have not yet resisted the blood striving against sin. We must, we know that he's with us all the time. For the duration, not just for the good times. We must take up the whole armor of God. We'll read about that in Ephesians chapter 6. You can turn there later and read that passage from verse 10 on. In conclusion, in our lesson, we must let the example of Caleb inspire us to follow the Lord fully. We must follow him all the days of our lives. We must follow him with all of our heart, all of our mind. In Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, Romans 12, 1 and 2. As you follow, turn there and check Romans 12, 1 and 2. He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We need to have mind renewal in a mindless society. We must follow him despite all the dangers. If we do so, we'll have a full, useful, an abundant life in the Lord. Don't forget, Caleb and Joshua were the only two out of 603,550 men over the age of 20 who survived the wilderness wanderings and entered the promised land. Their brethren did not because the Lord said, they have not fully followed me. Are we following the Lord like Caleb or like those who died in the wilderness? If we know and believe the victory, we can and will live like Caleb. Thanks for watching this devotion. I'll be uploading this 
devotion to YouTube and sharing on my YouTube channel. Again, pray for me tomorrow as I give this lesson at the Kramer and Hanover Church of Christ in Lexington, Kentucky. They meet at 11 a.m. for morning worship. They meet at 199 North Hanover Avenue in Lexington. That is off of Richmond Road. I think one block past Ashland. Then you turn left if you're coming from downtown Lexington or right if you're coming from New Circle Road. And the church is one block up on the left at the corner of Kramer and Hanover. Again, Caleb was a man of God who was true to him, had the faith, kept the faith his whole life, and fully served the Lord God of Israel. Can we say the same? Can we fully serve our God today and live for him who died for us? Thanks again for watching, folks.